Okay, so because today I'm bored and I don't feel like doing my school assignments, I'm going to show you my long case clock. This is a Jung Hans long case clock, or the remains of it, because the case is missing. I got it for my birthday this year, and it was made in the 1930s in Germany. Uh, the top part is the only remain of the case, and interestingly enough, it has retained some labels or stickers that I'm going to show you. It strikes on five chime rods, has a beam bam striking. And it's really quiet because it doesn't have that much resonance as it had in the case. And now I'm going to put my phone closer to the chime rod so you can hear it better. And I'm going to activate it by a lever behind, if I can reach it. Ah, yeah. It's very quiet, I don't think if you heard something at all. And also, something interesting be before we get to the movement. Uh, just as I said on this clock, the weights are almost always side by side. And this clock is much older than this one. So, now let's go to the movement. So, the top part has been removed, revealing the movement. And the deadbeat escapement. I cannot get you the best shot of that, because I've tried from various different angles, and I cannot get it. It has a wreck and snail striking system, but I cannot show you the front of the movement, because the taper pins that hold the dial together with the movement are very stiff, and I can't get them out. And I'm going to put a picture of an identical movement in editing. So you can see it. And now I'm going to show the back. So here's the back of the movement. Not much to see. Here it says Jung Hans Wurtenberg W201 28 and 10. And I've searched that serial number and I discovered that the clock was made in the 1930s. A problem that this clock had was that these two hammers in there have fallen loose and I had to mesh with the lifting wheel so it would work properly. And there it says 60 for some reason. And it took me a while to get it down the wall because I had to break this back part because I didn't think through when I put the chime rods onto the wall because I didn't think how to remove the mechanism from the wall. So it resulted this mess, but it's fine, because this is not the original stand, as far as I'm aware, I think. And now I'm going to put a picture of the front of the movement. Yeah, my Korean clock has just struck 3 o'clock. And these are the labels that I was talking about. A.T. Nuremberg. A long German word. <laughs> Nordbayern. E.G.M.B.H. Nuremberg. Breitegasse. 45. And it means... Breite Street 45. Nord Bavaria, I think that's how you say it in English, I don't know. 
correct me, correct me if I'm wrong. And Nuremberg is a city in Germany. Unfortunately, it is water damaged. Here it says also 45. It says hair in there. Very damaged. Hair means sir. And hmm, there's a name. But I can't really get you a good shot of that. I think it says Fenrir. Fenrir. I don't know. And here are some numbers written with a pencil and the wood. Interesting. Now I'm going to adjust it to the right time. And it's three and ten minutes. So I'm going to adjust it uh, a little too far. Or, no, this is good. So I think that's all. Oh no, I have forgotten one thing. Here on the bottom of the pendulum rod, you can see there's like a circle that's made for finer adjusting. To set the beat of the clock, you can set it by moving the crutch without moving the pallets, and this is for finer tuning, as I should say. You can move it left or right, so the clock would tick properly. And I don't know, I think it's a little offbeat. Yeah, a little of bit, but I have to set it. And I don't know why, but when I take the pendulum off and I hook it back on, it starts knocking itself out of beat. And I have to move that wheel a little again. I don't know why. It always has to be moved in a different position. But I think that's all. So... See ya later, I think.